How's it guys? Since my last tip video, I've played the game quite uh, a lot and I've learned a few things that I would like to share with you. So we'll start that with uh, weapons. I currently have a rifle, a shotgun, an assault rifle and a handgun in my inventory. And I mostly use the rifle and the handgun and the shotgun. I don't really use the assault rifle. And you would say, why do I have so many weapons? Why? I don't use all of these. I'll only carry that and that and that. I won't carry the assault rifle. But look, why would you use a particular weapon over another? What difference does it make? Here is the example. So we're going to take a look at our, our assault, our, our sniper rifle here. It's a semi-automatic. Uh, it fires around every time you pull the trigger. But it has a limited magazine capacity of 20. And you cannot fire it on, on full auto like you can with an assault rifle. And we look at this, it, it has similar damage. It's 41 units. This one's 42. So you would ask yourself, why would I use this when I could be using this, which fires on full auto, does the same amount of damage? It's because certain weapons have bonuses. For sniper rifles, whether they're semi-automatic or not, they have an armor penetration bonus. As you can see there, it says armor penetration, 7.5%. That helps mitigate your armor's bullet protection. Uh, it makes your armor less effective. This semi-automatic rifle technically does more damage than this assault rifle. However, this assault rifle fires faster, so it's a it's a balance. There are, there are trade-offs. Do I want this or do I want that? This one also has uh, a damage reduction at distance. It's far less. Like it says, up to 30 meters, it does 42 damage. And for this rifle, it says up to 14 meters, it does 41 damage. So uh, enemies further away will take less and less damage the the more uh, the further the bullet travels. So this does way better at range you're still doing full damage at, qu at quite a, uh, a far distance from yourself so that's why you use sniper rifles over assault rifles now people generally like the versatility of assault rifles they do okay at distance and they fire really fast uh, but if you if you're good at aiming this will absolutely beat this at distance so it all, all depends on where are you fighting is it a close quarter area like inside a building then this will win over this but if it's a it's a, an open field, this will win over this. So then we, this is where we come to shotguns. Now shotguns, this one also has an armor, armor penetration bonus. So combine that with armor piercing ammo, and you can actually use the shotgun against people. However, you typically don't use shotguns against people because shotguns have a higher damage bonus to mutants. You can actually see that there in its description there. Uh, shotguns are absolutely devastating against mutants. So that's why you want to keep a shotgun on you. You want to keep one that could possibly fit in your secondary slot. Or you do like me, you leave it in your inventory. And then you put it in your item wheel and then you can quickly switch to it. And then switch back to your rifle when you need to. Now, uh, rifles work better against people. Shotguns work better against mutants. And then we come to pistols. What's so special about a pistol? Pistols have incredibly high damage. As you can see there, it's 59 units per shot. That makes pistols a jack of all trades. They sit somewhere in between the, the assault rifle and the rifle and the shotgun. I've, I'm quite happy to use my, my pistol. I use it quite often. Like if I'm, I have a, a whole bunch of dogs chasing me and I, I'm shooting with the shotgun and run out of ammo, then I can just quickly switch to my pistol, fire a few quick shots, kill off whatever remains. And that makes it quite handy. But also the same against people. Pistols are quite effective against people as well. So that's why you would also keep a pistol on you. All right, next up, I just want to show you around here quickly over here is the auction house now if you want to sell something you need to come here and you'll place it in here you'll put your price your starting price that's what people can bid on and your buyer price if people are not interested in bidding they can simply buy it out so you usually want your buyer price to be higher than your starting price now if you click this it opens the auction house and you can see everything that's in here. Now if I click suits now, as you can see, there's quite a few things in here and the prices vary quite a lot. So what you want to do is like say you want to see the Alton sets, then you're going to type Alton, click search, and that only shows Altons. Then you're going to look through your buyer price or even perhaps your bid price. You see what time remains. These numbers here 
refer to the time that is remaining on the auction. So once that timer reaches zero, whoever has made the highest bid will win the item. And if you look over here, this is the buyer price. As you can see, it varies quite a lot. There's one for 50,000 and the majority are for 100,000. So I'm assuming this guy just wants money fast. So if you don't mind spending money, you simply click buy out and you could get it for cheaper. And here we get even cheaper, 30,000. It's actually quite affordable. And also you could make some money by coming here, looking at all these items, finding the cheapest one, and then putting it up for a higher price. Uh, the same can be with weapons, attachments. It just, let me take that out there. We'll click weapons again. There you've got a ton of weapons, grenades, ammunition, medicine and food, artifacts, whatever you want to use. That brings me to my next point, your item. It has a, a class, as it were. Let me look at my inventory. Now, we're going to look at the, the color of the name here. If you click note, that'll tell you the rank of the weapon. And so green is newbie rank. Blue is stalker rank. Pink is veteran rank. Or purple, I'm not sure if it's pink or purple. And so on. You, you get red after that, which is uh, master rank. And then gold, which is legendary rank. Now, why does this matter? It's because if you are wearing just uh, newbie level items, the, the green, everything is green. And then you open up a box, for instance, and... Uh, a loot box and you get this this pink veteran raffle and you equip that the game is now going to take the the fact that you have a veteran gear item and then match make you accordingly so now you will end up fighting players that have veteran level gear they're trying to make it even however it's not very specific so you could push yourself up to a level where everybody's running this kind of gear veteran gear like me you're going to have like bullet resistance of 179 on my armor and a damage of 40. So now, say you're using green. Uh, so where's the rifle here? Then we're going to look at the AK. A damage of 25. And the armor. Bullet resistance of 75. That is a massive difference. So if you put this weapon on, sure, you're doing. You're also doing 40 damage now. However, you're still wearing your green armor, and which has way less damage resistance. So who do you think is going to win that fight? So you basically gimp yourself by putting something better on when you don't have three items to wear that are all good. So you basically outclass yourself. So if you do get anything that's high level out of a crate, make sure you can have other things like you can put, you, you have an armor to put on if you buy it from the auction house or, or get it from a box. Make sure you have your weapon and your armor are high enough levels so that you do not get outclassed when the game changes the matchmaker on you. Other things that matter for the matchmaker are, as you can see, the weapon it says plus five. That's up, I've upgraded at five levels. That matters. Past five will put you into another bracket. Past 10 will put you into another bracket. And plus 15 will put you into another bracket. So the higher you go, the more you'll get matched against other items other gear sets and sometimes you don't want that that's why i've stopped at five it actually goes all the way up to 15. i do not want to get matched against people that are using plus tens because the majority of people using plus tens are in master gear and so i would be matched against master gear and then their gear just completely outclasses mine next up i want to talk to you guys about boosts now you get food for instance this one here this is a weak boost you consume it it gives you an improvement to your vitality, your movement speed, and your stamina regen. Same here for this. Crooked Claw Vodka. This improves your vitality, your stamina, your stamina regen, and your healing effectiveness. So you want to be using these. Especially when you're in combat and, and so on. This one increases stamina and carry weight. They each have their uses. However, these things do not stack. For the most part. Let me just quickly go to the trader. We'll buy us a piece of bread. And we'll buy a hemostat. And so on. Let me just move a bit further from the radio so you can hear me. Okay. This piece of bread will give us a stamina boost of 11.2%. So we consume that. Now we can see under effects our piece of rye bread 
and the boost and the time remaining. Now if I consume this, you would think this is just going to add even more boosts. However, it does not. As you can see now, our rye bread has become greyed out with a red box around it. That's because this has overridden this. So you, can't, you cannot simply just eat as much food as you want and then just keep the stuff stacking as long as it's a different piece of food. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Uh, now what I've found is that you can stack this and you can stack a drink and they will stack. Let me just show you there. See, this is stacking, this is stacking. These are all working together, but our raw bread is, is not. It's because we've got two food items and one is better than the other. So if we look, we have our, our drink item and our food item. So now we want, you can add one other item, which would be a medicine. So let's take, let's just eat this for example. Now we've got this, the stacking. So we've got together, we've got a medicine item. We have a food item, sorry, a drink item and a food item all stacked together, but it will always use the strongest of each class as it were. So the strongest medicine, the strongest food, strongest drink, anything weaker will, will simply become ineffective. It, uh, the bonus will be removed. As you can see on the little card there, it says item has lower priority, so it doesn't work anymore. So keep that in mind when you are using your consumables. Just beware though, there are exceptions. If, if I use this, for some bizarre reason, it'll remove my food, my, my food boost. Sorry, it'll remove my drink boost. I don't know why. It's just one of those things, I guess. Yeah. Next up, we have items that you can sell to the fence. Now, the fence is here in the basement. This is your, your regular item you get when you, you kill a rat or, a, or a, a, a dog or a boar or whatever. So you, you'll take your little items that you found and you bring it to fence and you come and you sell it. Now this is this is one of the main ways you make money in this game by selling these little items. As you go further north, it's like you, you know in the swamps there were rats, there were dogs, there were boars. And now you come to roadside, there's rats, there's dogs, there's boars. You move on to black willows, there's rats, there's dogs, there's boars. As you go further north, the creatures become stronger and they also drop better loot. So like as you can see here, we have a weak boar's hoof. The base selling price is 320 rubles. And then you have a boar's hoof. The base price is 800 rubles. Now both of these came from a boar. It's just one was in a higher level area as it were. So do not be afraid to go further north because you can make more money. Okay, moving on, I'll explain the different currencies. Now, you get your rubles, you get your repair parts. You get trade coins, you get credits, you get act tickets, and further, you get stall coins. Those are, that's the premium currency you use real money to buy. Now, most currencies will come from the season pass or battle pass or whatever you want to call it. Now, as you go along, you do your tasks, you get season points. And then you come to your progress, you claim your reward, and often your reward will be trade coins, credits, things like that. So now, what do you do with those things? First of all, we'll go back to our inventory, and we'll look at repair parts. You get these from boxes, you get these as rewards. What do they do? These you can use to repair all your gear and not have to pay any rubles for it. Then we get trade coins. What are these? Trade coins. You can trade to this fellow here. His name is Dealer. Now, you would look in here and you're like, well, I can't use trade coins here. However, he has different categories. Same like we have categories for our, our currencies. He has different categories for things you buy. So if you have these tickets, whatever these are, I'm not sure what they're called. But you can buy these. These little crates. And, and all these things here. Which is pretty cool. But here we have... Our trade coins. Now trade coins can also be used to, to buy these barter items. Now early on these things are pretty cheap. As you can see there's the stuff you get in the swamp. It's worth one. This one's worth two. It's not bad at all. 
you get your copper, it's worth four. It's not bad at all. And you don't need a crazy amount of copper. However, as you go further in the game, things start to get drastically more expensive and you need more and more and more to barter for a new weapon. So let me, let me actually go upstairs and show you. Okay, we're speaking to the barter guy to barter for more gear. Now you can see here, this deal just requires 64 swamp stones. This one requires 73 crap art and 66 copper wire. And then this one needs way more. And then this one needs all these new items. And you see the numbers just keep going up. Look at that, that's 900, 400. And we go further. The numbers become just absolutely staggering. As you can see, that's 2,000 of this one. And 600 of that one. So the general consens consensus seems to be save your trade coins. Now, th these are your trade coins. You can do with them whatever you like. But the consensus is to save them for the really high level stuff that you need absolutely stupendous amounts of to get a new weapon, a new armor, and so on. Right, next, we have credits. Now, what are, what are credits and what are they used for? Credits also come from here. As you can see, there's credits there. And these are used to buy things from the shop. Now, primarily, you're gonna be buying cases, or you could buy these tactical reserve cases you can buy this one, you can buy that one. This has like uh, master level gear in it. But this is this is gambling. And chance you could get something good. Uh, it, it's pretty small. So people also recommend do not buy cases. Come here and buy tools. So you can upgrade your gear. Buy serum. You can only buy 25. Because serum is going to be traded for master gear. And serum cannot be found out in the world. It can only be gained from here and by doing missions in the north. Your your dailies and so on. They'll they'll give award serum. But they reward like one per mission. So that, that becomes a bit difficult to, to farm. So people suggest buying this, buy your parts, and then anything you have left over, do whatever you want with, buy your crates, whatever. But I highly recommend buying that, buying these if you want to. These can also be bought off the off the auction house for uh, rubles. So you don't necessarily have to buy these. It's up to you. Our next currency is act tickets. Act tickets are pretty rare. These also come from here. Um, if I go to my next reward, next one, I receive act tickets. Now these, you don't get a whole lot of these. However, they are very valuable. Now, if we go back to the shop again, uh, we got equipment. You can use your act tickets to buy these. You can buy armor. You can buy this. Uh, it's like a backpack. You can buy weapons, and so on. You can also buy. I believe there was a yeah. There's a bunch of cases for act tickets. I would not do that. But once again, it's up to you. It's your it's your tickets. And you can buy a season pass with act tickets. What else can you buy? And you can buy these parts here. These are are parts that you're gonna go trade four items and that is what you use your act tickets for which also leads me to the next part when you open crates what are they called when you open these tactical reserve crates you gain parts oh, where, where was I you get these parts so like you get mg3 part 4 mg3 part 3 part 2 and part 1 now the lower things that are pretty easy this drops pretty easy when you, when you get to red and you get to gold, the drop rate is significantly lower. Uh, the chances of it dropping are very, very small. So you could use your act tickets to buy the last part. And then once you have all parts, then you're going to come to this guy, the exchanger, and you're going to click the, the barter button. And then say you want your MG3, you click that, and then you're going to take your parts and you're going to put it in here. 
and he'll give you his, this MG3, his master level weapon. Once again, if you equip it, expect to be matched against higher level opponents. And then you have your, your armor here and your legendary items, which it's actually your chance if you'll be able to get enough act tickets to buy these. It's very possible you will not get enough. But that's that. Uh, those are the, the new things I've discovered. Um, hopefully it brought some clarity to you. It took me a while to figure out a lot of this stuff. I had to ask a lot of questions. Um, so I hope this helps you out. If, if it was helpful to you, please click that like button. Subscribe to my channel for future content. So anyway, guys, cheers. Take care.